first board meeting since Daniel Gratinsky bought 27% of West Ham is going to be really, really interesting. Uh, the dynamic of the whole setup has changed so much. In many respects, not only is it going to be interesting, I believe it's going to be the first proper board meeting that there's been in quite some time. So that squeak is the chair. All right, just so as we're clear, that squeak, that's a chair. All right, anyway. Um, cast your mind back, if you will, to the point where Project Restart, football's got going again, and crowds weren't allowed to go back into the stadium. I think fans came back for a game or two, then they were kicked out again. There was a spike in COVID, if you remember. There came a point where only employees were allowed into the grounds. Now, you'll remember shortly after that, there were a load of people that were added to the um, to the West Ham board. Now, I might have this wrong. Excuse me if I haven't got it absolutely right, but I think... Um, Possibly David Sullivan's girlfriend. I think there was a couple of, maybe David Gold's mate. Something like that. There was a load of people who were put on as non-executive directors onto the board who are no longer there. I think I made, I was quite, maybe a bit cynical at the time and did a video and suggested that maybe they'd been put onto the board um, just so as they could officially get into the ground and watch the games. I think those days are gone. I also gave the example of... If you remember when Sam Allardyce was being told by the club that they were going to, he was going to have to have an attacking coach. If you remember, he was in a, a terrible run of form and he basically had Teddy Sheringham forced upon him, not literally. Uh, now, if you remember, there was a board meeting and the board meeting was apparently David Gold, uh, Karen Brady and David Sullivan at David Sullivan's house. Um, when I say house, I don't mean three-bedroom semi-detached house, obviously. I'm sure they do have a, a very nice meeting room in there. But nonetheless, it was still a meeting at someone's gaff, right? Now, I, again, I think those days are gone. I think you then go to the point where a lot of these things have been done over Zoom meetings and things like that, for obvious reasons, some because of COVID. The dynamic has now changed massively. So that first meeting, which I do think is probably going to be a proper a proper board meeting, which is obviously going to be the three protagonists I've just mentioned, plus Kratinsky, plus he's, um, is it Horsky? I think his name is Horsky. Um, are there any more, going to be any more in the boardroom? I don't know, but that's a very, very different dynamic. That's going to be really interesting. My interest in it is, what are they going to say? What's going to be the first thing on the agenda? Now, I think a lot of people might suggest that it's going to be, who are we bringing in? What sign are we going to bring in? I actually think it's separate from now. I think the very first thing that Daniel Kratinsky is going to want to discuss is, how do we keep Declan Rice? This is fundamental. I do think they are going to go on and talk about signings. I think the stadium is going to play a huge part. But let's just deal with the Declan Rice situation first because I think it's most important. If, again, we look at what's been said to Declan Rice, as we understand it, he's been offered two contracts. He's turned them down. If you believe the whispers, none of this is facts, but if you, if you believe the whispers, because every time I say this, somebody always in the comments says, what makes you think that Declan Rice wants to leave? I, I, honestly, like clockwork, like clockwork, right? Uh, the reason I believe this is it's come out in the press, OK? Um, I think it's Matt Law, possibly at the Telegraph, has leaked the story, and he suggests that he's got contacts in the Declan Rice camp. And Declan Rice camp are saying, don't offer us a third contract, we're not going to sign it, we don't want it, OK? That's why I'm saying it. I don't know, I'm just going on the information that's out there. Also, you have West Ham, who are also saying we've offered him, we've offered him two deals so far, he doesn't appear to want to come to come to the negotiating table. So the voice that's that's suggesting he speaks on behalf of Declan Rice's advisors is saying the same thing that our owners are saying, right? So I believe it to be the truth. But they've offered him that. I, I just wonder if before they've promised him the earth. This is a little bit different now because what we're going to have now when we go to Declan Rice, we're going to have a body of evidence now where we can actually turn around and say, Declan, this club is going places. Before, they were just words. Not an awful lot of evidence backed up behind it, just words. Now we can look at it and we can say to Declan, Declan, and even if it's, it might be now, it might be January, it might be, you know, later on in the year, whatever. But we will be able to turn around to him and say, this club is on the up. And we can back it up with some statistical data. You're in the team, you can see this. We've shown we've brought players in. And also we now have new investment. We are on the up. Give us another year, give us another two years, whatever the case may be, see how we go. Now, I think it's really crucial that we do that. And I think Kratinsky is going to want to do that as well. But we have to convince Declan. Because all that stuff is going to do, what I've said, 
is is maybe spike his interest. He might look and think, OK, well, how far are you willing to go? Because what we have to do is we have to convince Declan to stay with West Ham and say we're going to build an even better team around you, which I do think makes this January transfer window all the more important that we actually do something. So we don't, we're not asking Declan to wait until next summer before we show him that actually we're going to bring a couple more players in. Three players, maybe. Now, the, the players that we've... Dis I, I mentioned in a video a couple of days ago, I think Tarkowski is a good shout because he's... We know he's an England international. His contract's running down. We know Moyes likes him. So you bring in Tarkowski to play alongside Ogbonna or, or just to strengthen that up. I think Rice looks at that. I think, OK, well, I know this guy. I've trained with this guy for England. This is, this is good. Do you go and get Jesse Lingard? Again, that would... Declan would think, hello, this is, this is not bad. And then you bring in a striker as well. If you do that, and I think it ain't massive outlay, by the way. I don't think you're paying a fortune for Lingard because his contract's up. I don't think you're paying a fortune for Tarkowski because his contract's up. The striker, I don't know. I've, whatever, plucked him out of, out of thin air. Maybe we do the Hlossic. The Hlossic thing from Sparta Prague. Don't know. I'm pretty sure that bringing in those players would, would get us top four. We know we've got the manager to do it. We know we've got the team to do it. The only thing... That is that we're really concerned about is do we have the squad depth? That would sort it out. I'm going to give you a quote here, and this is a quote from a, a senior a senior source, uh, not a bunny rabbit, not two bunny rabbits, a senior source at West Ham. And when I say senior source, it's somebody senior that's not Karen Brady. Let's put it that way. Um, talking about Kuczynski, says a very clever businessman has invested in this. He hasn't invested in this club to see it stand still. We're enthusiastic to work together. The future's very bright indeed. You don't say that stuff off the record if you don't mean it. Uh, the key thing there, he's not invested here to see it stand still. Basically, he's investing to see it go forward. If he's very bright, which again, that was said in there, there's no reason to dispute that, then realistically, he's going to know that, that strike while the iron's hot. As I said in the previous video, this, this January is the time to go for it. We've got a good manager. We've got everything in place. Um, let's, let's push it forward. I think if you do that and we do get top four, and, I, and it is possible because we're there, we're already in the top four. So we strengthen there, strengthen while you're on top. I think you would start to have a very, very different conversation with Declan Rice. Because you then add it to the point where you say, look, Declan, this club is is really going places. Two years ago, look, we were fighting relegation. Since then, we've climbed up the league. We've been one of the most consistent teams in the league. We qualified for the Europa League. Qualified for the Europa League. Got through the knockout stages. Where we'll be later on, I don't know. But if you have qualified top four at the end of this season, you then say, look, we've gone from relegation, Europa League. Now we're a Champions League team. Clearer on the up. We've shown you and we've demonstrated... We've demonstrated by the players that we've brought in, international players, Premier League stars, people like Zuma, people like Lingard are Premier League stars, you know, um, and, and proper established internationals. You're saying, look, we are building a team. We want to build it around you. We want you to be the captain. Can you then bring him to the table to sign a new deal? Well, I think you can. Declan will want, I think there's a halfway house, and I was mentioning this to, to Gio when we discussed this on our, on our mug of tea on Patreon. We, we were having a chat about this because someone asked a question on there. I think there's a halfway house between him. It's not signing a new contract and him signing a five, six-year deal that ties him down at West Ham forever. I think, you know, I, I think there's somewhere in the middle where, where both parties can meet and get something out of it, OK? We want to safeguard our investment, but more importantly than that, not only do we want to safeguard the, the investment we've put into him and, and the way we've sort of nurtured him since he joined us from Chelsea's academy, we also want the first team to get better. Well, the first team's only going to improve with somebody like that um, as, as the pivot. Now, what's Declan Rice want? Well, Declan Rice probably wants to think that he can challenge and win trophies and he can, he can be in the England team. Well, he's in the England team anyway. That, that's, that's a given. That's fine. Not only is he at West Ham, he's in the England team and he's one of the guaranteed starters. Um... The, the trophies, well, we have to prove that to him. But I think, because he's only 22, he's got the, he can give us another couple of years to prove it. But what I suggested was a deal that would be something like, um, we make him the highest paid player at the club. The owners have already said they're willing to do that. That's not a problem. That offer's on the table. We understand that Declan might like, and I don't know this to be the fact, again, Declan might like a buyout clause in there. Well, the buyout clause can be staggered. You can have it where he signs a new five-year deal. And actually what you say, Declan, give us 18 months, give us two years. After a two-year period, the buyout clause comes in. 
then if a club comes in with the, whatever it might be, the 120 million or whatever it might be, someone comes in, they trigger it, you're off, you go with our blessing, but you've given us two years to allow us to grow. But for us to do that, we have to show in the potential. Also, Declan Rice clearly isn't money motivated. However, that being said, every week that goes by when he's not earning 140 grand a week, he's, he's losing money. Um, if what we're saying is true, that actually we, we're going to keep him for the next three years irrespective anyway, then that's a lot of money to lose over three years. I mean, you know, a lot, a lot of money. Declan Rice is probably... Declan Rice is probably going to be down at least 15 million quid. Now, um, I know I say he's not money motivated. I don't think he is. It's a lot of money to miss out on. So there's there's a sort of halfway house there where Declan gets the wages. He, he, pro he probably deserves. I'm not even going to say thinks he deserves because he's not banging on the door asking for it. The wages that, he, that a player of his standard and his calibre deserves, he gets those wages, but there's an out for him if West Ham capitulate and don't do well and West Ham can't provide him in his career, with the trophies that he obviously feels that he wants to win. And I get it. I really do get it. But I do think it's really interesting with Kratinsky coming in. Does it change the dynamic of it slightly? Declan will be curious. Declan will be thinking, oh, OK, this guy's coming in. He's worth £4 billion or whatever it is. This is going to be really interesting. You also wonder, we go back to this boardroom, um, whether the dynamic of the board is going to be of any interest to the players and players like Declan. De uh, Declan? <laughs> Declan, apologies. Um, the board meeting, that's interesting. You sit down for that first board meeting, they're saying, what's, uh, again, what's the strategy for January, for the transfers? What's the strategy uh, for the stadium? What's the strategy for, bringing, for, for keeping Declan? It is going to be really high on the agenda. Um, these talks have been going on for months. As I mentioned, it's why pie capital. We're, we're never going to be um, a viable solution. He, he's not walking into a surprise here. It's not like he has to walk in, Kratinsky, and do his due diligence and find out about the club. And I don't just mean financial due diligence. I mean due diligence on looking at the team. He will know that we're a striker light. He will know the Declan Rice situation. He will understand the dynamic of the football club, certainly. And he's not going to want to go in there and see his investment dwindle. Uh, uh, if he's going in and investing, uh, really what is an all-time high and an all-time high valuation for West Ham, where his shares that he's bought are valued at a club, really, that's probably in the top six. I wouldn't say he's valued as a Champions League club, but certainly in the top six. He's not going to want to see his shareholding value <laughs> reduced because we tumble down the league. He's going to want to do something. This, this will have already been discussed. The board will already know what they're doing. It's just the composition of the board that's changed. It's going to be really interesting. This conversation will have already been had, but the way they go to Declan, the way they present this opportunity to Declan is going to be key. I, I do wonder if it's happened already. I don't know. I don't know. I suspect it probably hasn't. But the only way to prove it is by going in and making these signings. There's a couple of things that are going to be key to these things happening. I think the recruitment of the old gorgeous George Santos um, the scout is important because it may well mean that the guys coming over from Marseille, the centre backs, the Tazar. I think Rob Newman being in there is really important. Um, I, you know, I mean, it, I think it's actually massively important that recruitment drive there because because we need to show really quickly in this transfer window to Declan that we're bringing players in, and we don't because we don't want to lose ground by by bringing players in late in the transfer window. And the other thing that's key. Um, believe it or not, is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer keeping his job. We, we really need that. What we don't need is a new manager coming into Manchester United and suddenly playing Jesse Lingard. Um, once he gets to January, Jesse Lingard can sign pre-contract agreements with foreign clubs. I'd hope he wouldn't. I'd hope he we, he can't sign a pre-contract with us, but he can make an agreement. And at that point, Man United's um, leverage there, any negotiating power they've got is gone because actually he can technically sign for a foreign club for free. So at that point, Man United have almost got to take whatever they can. So if we go in there in January and say, there you go, Man United, there's seven million quid for Jesse Lingard, you'd imagine they would have to take it. If he's given indications he'd be happy to come back to West Ham, why wouldn't he? He's now, as I believe, I don't know what's happened as the mix-up with the players dropping out and, and whatnot. I don't know if he's on the reserve list for England or anything else, but at the moment, he's not playing for Man U and he's not one of Gareth Southgate's first choices. He already knows that even in a team last season at West Ham, even not as not as good as we were this season, he can come to West Ham, he can star in the Premier League, get back into the England squad. That's already alluring. He knows he can do it. It's a path that's already been trodden. 
Um, we do that. We do it early. A lot of things have got to fall into place, but it's really interesting. And it is... I've been... There's a squeak again. It's really exciting. I really do mean that. Yesterday, I spent a lot of time, you know, rereading articles and looking at stuff. And it's an exciting time for West Ham, but I think it's managed excitement from us. I don't think we are expecting hundreds of millions to be ploughed into the playing stuff. But there's an excitement to thinking we might buy Lingard. There's an excitement to thinking we might sign another centre-back for 20 million. There's an excitement to that because we know what David Moyes can do with that sort of money. We know that what it means to the squad and we know he'll probably pick a character that's not going to upset the balance of the squad. It's only going to improve the squad. Um, exciting times, exciting times. But, but, number one on the list that first boardroom meeting, which will be a professional boardroom meeting, not a Zoom call. Uh, certainly not. I do think it'll be right. How can we get Declan Rice to stay? 